All right, so I am back. I, I had to clear up some things because, you know, in the field, when you're talking about narcissists and empath, um, again, the people, sometimes people make it exaggerated, but I think that if we are learned or schooled, like, okay, yeah, I do work in um, psychology, what happens is, is that we can help others to overcome and understand that you can never ever give or be to these people what they really desire because what happens is that these people are not working on themselves. They're not filling their own cup. They expect for people to fill their cup. But then when I look at, you know, it as a narcissistic trait, I'm looking at all of America. We have uh, political leaders that are narcissists. So from the head down, Aaron said the anointing flows. Now, no one ever really discusses what the anointing is, but the anointing is anything that is going to um, um, disperse an energy. So the anointing we know from the Christian uh, perspective is positive. It brings change. But there's an anointing of darkness over America, and that's affecting our people. Uh, the other thing is, is that the characteristics of what America functions off of is capitalism. And that means that people are taught here how to capitalize off of each other. So when I look at some of these words, um, I can see that I've been uh, in relationships work-wise and friendship-wise with people that have those traits. But I also said, well, you know, before I changed spiritually, I had pride, envy, and strife. And uh, it was so in me that um, it was a revengeful type of um, way. And so I, I just think that instead of hyping things up, we need to investigate ourselves and look at ourselves and, and say, where is, um, who am I? What am I? You know, what do I bring to the table personality wise? And what do I need to change? And then I could go and say that pride, you know, you can go into Galatians um, chapter five and pride is one of the, the traits of darkness. Um, and let me just read something to you before I go into this book. Um, so it says symptoms of a narcissist, they have exaggerated self, uh, sense of self-importance. Um, they have a sense of entitlement and require constant excessive admiration. Uh, they expect to be recognized as superior, even without achievements that want, that don't warrant it. Uh, they exaggerate achievements and talents. Uh, they uh, become preoccupied with fantasies about success, power, brilliance, beauty, or the perfect mate. Okay, so I said to myself, what's the difference in someone that ex exalts um, the pride, the arrogance? Um, what is the difference? Uh, you do have a narcissistic uh, disorder, but I believe that there is a level of narcissistic in all of us because narcissism in all of us. Why? When you tell the truth, you want admiration. You want people to look up to you. You want uh, to feel great when you don't work at feeling great yourself. You want other people to do it for you. I mean, every day we have people looking outside of themselves, asking why no one is doing anything for me. Why is no one helping me? right? And if these uh, entitlement thoughts are what narcissists have, or he exaggerates himself, he or she, uh, we're able to do it too uh, as human beings. So here it says, um, let me read this to you in Galatians 5 and uh, 19. It says, now the works of the flesh are manifest, the flesh. It says, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, uh, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, uh, heresies, envyings, murder, drunkenness, rivalings, and such as the like. 
All of these are also traits that you will see in a narcissist. They're controlling, manipulative. They don't know a true reality from what they've created. The reality of inwardness with spirit, they don't know that. All they know is external reality. So this is my point. Anybody that believes in God or a force that's uh, greater than them will understand that a narcissist does not have the power that they have been given by people. They've been given power by people so that, that ex 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 so ex exalted so. themselves. My phone came on by itself. Oh my God. Anyway, they've been given power from people that have little belief in themselves. I say this again they've been given power to, from people that don't really believe in themselves. You know, these people, they go around and they're, they wanna be the life of the party. They will dress up. They'll always have clothes that are new so that they can bring some attraction to their self. They always have something new to bring attraction because the attraction of the emotions is satisfying them by people always talking about them. But I see prideful people like that as well. They get off on people talking about them, boosting them up, how great they are. But I, I see this in people every day. Because America, now I'm not throwing off, you look at this the way you want to. America has made people believe that they're great by things that they acquire, not by the emotions, which means that when a person builds up externally, they can also be broken down externally by losing everything. I believe that a person of pride will change when they lose everything. A real narcissist will be known when they lose everything and there's a change there, why? Because they can't accommodate through things anymore. They aren't happy because people aren't looking up to them anymore. They have to have a source of income to make them look great, number one, because the attraction of material is what makes people look at them. How'd you do that? Where'd you get that from? And so they're telling everybody. And so their information that they're giving to everyone is like, um, something that makes them feel good. Then my thing is, is that if you can give information, why don't you just feel good about yourself, period? Why, why don't you go within uh, as a prideful person and work on yourself instead of drawing people into your situation to take from them? You can change, and I'm talking to the person that has narcissistic traits because all of this here, according to our Bible, is what will bring a person to their breaking point. When you destroy, I mean, when you, yeah, if you destroy someone in their character, when you hurt other people, there is a thing called karma that's gonna come. Now, it doesn't matter if you believe me or not, I switch over, because I was talking about the empath, and I said, I don't know why they, you know, people glorify narcissistic behavior so, but then it could be because, yeah, I'm a strong person. So, you know, people can see you the way that they want to, and you can also present yourself to people the way that you want to. Life is really a game. And so it's about the players. And I remember um, the song, If You Play Your Cards Right, sometimes you're not playing your cards right because whenever you get off emotionally on hurting people, there's something wrong with you. And you have not investigated it. But the thing about it is that you don't have to see that it's wrong. It's like this here. The day of karma is coming for you. And then people, we don't have to do anything. You don't have to do anything to hurt anybody. What you have to do is always grow stronger and be a better person. What does that mean? Better than you were yesterday. And it's not even about competing with people. It's about seeing who you are for truth. If you are prideful, envious, if you're striving, fighting with people, that is a downsider right there. It blocks your blessings. 
if you feel good about seeing people hurt, your blessings are going to come to an end. Why? Because we're all here to bless each other positively, by the way. Okay. Let me read on. But the fruit of the spirit, it says, is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. Temperance for the um, impasse. Temperance means that you, you gain strength over your emotions when you're triggered by people when you're hurt you go within and find out why and most of the time a water sign is going to be triggered because they're sensitive to atmospheric things that are going on they're sensitive when they walk into a room they must know themselves so that when they attract someone with pride and arrogance that they'll be able to work with that in a positive way and not lose anything a person that's weak should follow the same directions if you're weak and you're crying about everything that they say then you want to work on your emotions the water in you, your natal sign uh, chart will tell you. I do natal charts um, and the description or the price will be at the bottom in the description box. The water in your chart will tell you why you overreact, why you're emotional. I mean, then you got narcissists that are like that. So what am I saying here? I believe that anyone can be changed and healed spiritually if they can see that there is something that they need to change. But a person of pride and arrogance, rival and striving, sometimes they've lived so long in that type of mindset, um, they have trauma within them, they're guarding themselves, they don't wanna change because they're used to the way that they, they do things, but then the days add up and the time comes when there's nothing left there for them because the season of glorification will leave. And also the day of karma has to come for all of us because we plant and we receive our, um, our um, harvest back, whether we plant it good or bad. When you are a part of hurting people emotionally, you're gonna suffer emotionally. It is, so it is. If you grow a orange tree, then you are going to get oranges. You cannot plant seeds for money and get an orange tree. Seeds for money is gonna be money trees. Do you feel me? All right, so always work on yourself to strengthen yourself, not because you are competing or trying to hurt someone else, but because you know in the world that we live in we're meeting people that are hurt they're hurt and i look at the narcissist that way i look at anyone that has pride arrogance that's striving with others um as someone that's been hurt and they haven't faced their um trauma from childhood i look at them and you know my prayers are with them but as you pray make it a sincere prayer and understand why people are like they are. Because we were all something before we started working on ourselves and making changes, all right? God bless. And I came out of the book, I went into the Bible because I want people to look at pride in the book versus um, narcissism. And then bring the hype down. And I think it's good that you expose it, um, you know, out and out in the world because the head acts as uh, um, narcissist. The leaders act narcissistic. They have no emotions towards what's really going on with the population of the people. Uh, and it's the same. To me, it's just arrogance. Uh, they were built up and put in a position where everyone wants to be around them because of what they have. But what do they have? They're drawing from people actually. Without those people, they would be nothing because emotions are given to them. They're given the ability to be able to stand sturdy. If no one was there to support them, our leaders, they wouldn't be able to stand soundly. Understand what I'm saying. 
Sometimes you're supporting something because you learn from it. But then when you learn from it, as I said, then you move on with the lesson intact. Understanding that people need prayer because they believe things make them who they are rather than their selves or their inner self, the love makes them who they are. So Galatians 5 is a good chapter to read, period. But from um, 519 to the end, yep, right to um, 526, okay? So any questions, email me at ifwbuilders at gmail.com. Have a wonderful day. The class on the shadow self will be 722-2020. That is Wednesday this week at 1.30. It's only $30. Make your donation. Our donations always go to help families in need. Check out our 501c3 on www.ifwbuildis at gmail.com. Thank you.